Welcome to a team selection video. I know it's quite early on in the week and there could be a few changes before the deadline, which I will be talking about in the deadline stream. But at the moment, this is how my team stands. Ultimately, what you want to have right here when you start off in game week one is a flexible squad that you can change around and then try to get some other players. For example, Sun, try to find a way to get to him um, without compromising the rest of your team. So that's going to be very interesting and that will also lend itself very nicely in the future because you're not going to be taking massive hits um, to get the informed players and there's going to be many of them throughout the season. Um, so it's going to be very important to keep a cool head and to not overreact. And as always, the lead code is on the left-hand side of your screen and also in the description below. You can copy the code into the Fantasy Premier League website and join the league or you can just click on the auto-join link and you automatically join and you are part of the Dylan RCM League and you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter uh, as well as subscribing to the channel if you enjoy this sort of content. Um, thank you very much to everyone who is watching and without further ado let's talk about my team and uh, a kind of ever-present player has been Sanchez. Um, despite my reservations about him, um, since coming in uh, around game week 13 last season he scored 101 points, only eight bonus which is a bit I wouldn't say you're worrying, but it's not really too impressive. And in terms of save points as well, he doesn't get too many of them. Uh, but maybe this season with Ben White leaving, if uh, Lewis Dunk is unavailable, which to be honest, I think he should be fine, but obviously don't hold me to that. Um, but maybe Brighton will be a bit weaker defensively. Sanchez could obviously rack up some more save points, but at, looking at the other side of it, then Brighton's clean sheet likelihood is just way, way uh, worse than it used to be. And Brighton actually getting so many injuries left, right and centre at the moment with Lamptey, uh, Lewis Dunk sustained an injury. I think um, also Dan Byrne, also Sanchez had a knock. So they are actually having some very bad luck in pre-season. But yeah, we'll wait and see what happens there. I still think Sanchez is the best 4.5 million goalkeeper. Backman is also potentially quite interesting and actually uh, since coming in uh, Daniel Backman uh, for Ben Foster when he got his injury he got 13 clean sheets in 22 championship matches and he became the undisputed number one for Austria during Euro 2020 so he's another good option at 4.5 million and probably the two the only two really I'd consider uh, in the goalkeeper bracket um, otherwise yeah I just think uh, I'm just going to be going with Sanchez I think they have a better chance of clean sheets um, then again though I'm not as confident in Brighton as I was beforehand and I do think that losing uh, Ben White is going to be very significant for them we'll wait and see how they cope with it um, but yeah that's just my kind of two cents on the matter as for the defense there has been quite a few changes as well um, and Ben Shiro is actually in there and he scored three goals and assisted five in 27 league appearances last season, got a few more fantasy assists. And I think on his debut, or at least his first start for Chelsea, um, he scored and assisted against Crystal Palace. It was a mega haul. Uh, I remember that one. And uh, yeah, instantly everyone was trying to get him in. And he's definitely well capable of that. And what I really like about Chilwell going into this season is that Marcos Alonso is likely to leave um, and also Emerson. Uh, so Chilwell should have that left back spot quite nailed. There will be the occasional rotation. We know that we're too sure. Um, I do think they won't be as bad as it was last season and Chihuahua will be a bit more nailed. Unfortunately, though, he's not completely nailed and therefore he's not completely nailed in my team. Still, I think he's a good option and if he you know, cements that position and there's not really any competition, then I think Chihuahua is definitely the standout from Chelsea. Um, even over the likes of Havertz and other positions, I really like Chihuahua and I think he could do exceptionally well this season and possibly break the 150 point barrier and start to compete Trent Robertson when he returns from injury and all these players as the highest scoring FPL defender this season. Trent Alexander-Arnold has been in all of my drafts and it will probably stay the same especially given the fact that Robertson's now injured so there's not really kind of an alternative for him. Trent Alexander-Arnold though he's pretty much always one of the highest scoring FPL defenders. He was up there last season with Robertson and Creswell despite having multiple um, months where he was just playing really poorly. Liverpool weren't at you know the same level defensively and yeah he was even benched for some games. Uh, he started 34 games. He tends to start the 37 or 38 this season. Should be the case so long as he's fit and uh, depending on how other competitions come into play. But Trent Alexander-Arnold, probably, I wouldn't say a must-have or essential. I think you could possibly look elsewhere, go for Cancelo or Diaz, go for Chilwell and kind of spread the funds across your, your team. I still think, though, that Trent is one of the best defenders and options 
in the whole game uh, that you can own. So I thoroughly recommend him and most people will be having him anyway. So there's not really a kind of uh, too much to talk about there. As for Luke Shaw, um, he should be back. It's now Juan Bissaka that it looks like who could be actually out uh, for Manchester United, uh, which is obviously kind of a, a twist in the tail. Luke Shaw, though, great attacking potential, despite the fact that him and Aaron Wan-Bissaka were identical in terms of goal output last season. Luke Shaw's underlying numbers suggest that he was very unlucky not to go away with more points. And uh, I think this season he will have not only better quality around him, so he's going to get more assists, um, but I think maybe he can get an extra goal or two um, with the positions he's getting into. More goals like he scored against Manchester City, I think is on the cards. So Luke Shaw, I think, is a fantastic option at 5.5 million. There is also Luca Digne, and uh, I mean, uh, I'm going to recognise that it might be very reactionary to kind of go off Everton players as a whole um, because of the way they got thumped by Manchester United in a recent pre-season friendly. They lost 4-0, they were 3-0 down in under half an hour. Um, but kind of looking at it from my perspective, I already had doubts about Everton um, despite having Rafa Benitez. It might take some time for him to gel things, uh, especially at the back. And with those reservations already in mind, with Calvo Lewin, it looks like he's going to miss the start of the season potentially. Um, those are the, really the only two players I'm looking at, Luca Dina and Calvo Lewin from Everton. And if I'm not really that confident in their defence, and there's some quite tough fixtures, at least from a defensive point of view for Everton, um, then and also just looking at the fact that is Dina going to be as offensive as he was last season when he got nine fantasy assists? I'm not so sure. So with all those question marks and kind of uncertainty in the air, it kind of does put me off Luke Dina. So at 5.5 million, I'd rather go for Luke Shaw, who has better fixtures, at least from a defensive point of view. And also Manchester United are just a better team and also a better defence. So that's why... Uh, that's how I'm going to be looking at it. You could arguably maybe go from Chihuahua to Digne, save a bit of money there, and I might do that in the end. But in this moment in time, what I want to do, and this is something I discussed in all of my draft videos, I want to build a team that's also looking for the long term uh, because I may want to save my wild card uh, for later on in the year and it might be a viable strategy going forward. And going for the likes of Trent Alexander-Arnold, Luke Shaw and Chihuahua, I cover three of the best teams in the country and three of the best defences. And I could even go for someone like Cancelo or Diaz as well. Um, so I want to look long term and not make multiple changes at the back. So if Dinier has a few poor performances or he's not getting the attack and returns and Everton are struggling for clean sheets, then he's just going to be a waste at 5.5 million. I have a lot more confidence in the other options so long as they start. Um, so that's why at the moment I think Trent, Chuo and Shaw, I'd just rather go with them and maybe a City defender over Dinier. And then the Soufal, who to be fair, He's going under the radar as well. He got nine fantasy assists as well last season. And it's a tough one, you know, going for him or Creswell. Creswell's always going to have that benefit of being on set pieces. So he can always kind of just nick some bonus points or assists out of thin air pretty much. Uh, but I really like Soufal, even from open play. You look at the Euros, for example, he looks so good in there. The quality of delivery is exceptional. And uh, West Ham, I think their fullbacks are pretty much the budget version of the Liverpool tr um, duo, should I say. So, yeah, I really like Soufal and some good fixtures although I'll be honest I'm not too confident in a clean sheet in some of these games like um, Newcastle for example in the opening game uh, but I do like Soufal a lot and I think he's a fantastic option at 5 million I'd say he's the standout defender um, although there are other options I think Soufal is the standout at that price bracket and uh, moving on to the final defender and this is another change to my defence and that's why it's very important to kind of nail the defence and get it sorted and avoid those extra transfers. Amati is in there. Now with Fafana sustaining a very serious injury against Villarreal in their 3-2 victory in pre-season, he's going to be out for quite some time it looks like. And Johnny Evans is also nursing an injury. Who knows when he's going to be back. So it looks like Amati is going to start the first few games of the season and he looked thoroughly impressive in the Community Shield victory against Manchester City. So I really like Amati and I think he's a fantastic option. At 4 million, there's also the Greek left back from Liverpool. You could maybe go for him, but then again, uh, Klopp could opt for someone like Milner. And Robertson, it's not like he got stretched out. Um, he was still able to walk, although he was limping. So maybe Robertson isn't going to be out for too long anyways and Milner could still fill in so 
I think at 4 million at this moment in time, Amati is the standout. Everyone was going for Fafana anyway. Amati offers kind of a similar attacking threat as Fafana would. So really, you're saving 0 0.5 million there and you're getting a Leicester defender who's got some very good fixtures. They look very resolute and solid against Manchester City, although it wasn't a full-strength side for the citizens. But I really like Amati and I would thoroughly recommend him. If you're looking for a 4 million defender, instead of going for the Norwich defender, Andrew, or going for the Greek left-back uh, from Liverpool, who you might have a few reservations about. There's a lot of question marks in the air. Maybe just go for Amati, who should be nailed for the first few weeks, and I think he can get plenty of clean sheets along the way. There's some very good fixtures, but also what I would recommend is not just looking at fixtures and saying, oh, are Leicester going to win or are they going to lose? Also think of, do I see them keeping a clean sheet? And to be honest, in some of these games like Norwich uh, for Leicester City, I can see them keeping the clean sheets. And that's the important thing. When you're looking at defenders, try to, well, at least, you know, kind of, decide or guess are they going to get a clean sheet and with attackers do you think they're going to get a lot of goals as a whole team and will this particular player do well in terms of assists or goals um, so yeah with Amati I really like him and moving on to the midfield uh, a few changes in here as well and um, it's kind of a mixture of my previous drafts and putting it into one Mohamed Salah has been ever present and that's not going to change he's the standout captaincy option um, for pretty much the next six weeks um, Obviously, in game week three against Chelsea, that's where you probably wouldn't want to have a double up of him and Mane or even him and Jota. I think he's a great captaincy option for, I'd, I'd say, four of the next six game weeks. And on a whole, I just don't think you can go without him. He's the closest, I would say, to essential of any player in FPO at the moment. And then there's Bruno Fernandes, who, to be honest, I've seen a lot of people kind of disregarding and saying, oh, I'm definitely going for someone else. Uh, Bruno is not going to do as well with the kind of... Uh, changes in laws about penalties and all of this I still think he's a great asset of course he scored a great free kick against Everton and he just has a bit of everything in his locker 12 million is a very hefty price but you know we're getting the highest scoring play in FPL last season he got a ridiculous amount of goals and assists and you just don't get that very often he's going to be nailed he's going to start every single game week and with quite a few players out or at least not fully available yet for Manchester United Bruno's going to be the undoubted talisman in that side and uh, everything's going to go through him so even in game week one you could go for him as a captaincy option over Salah and what I really like about Bruno in general just having him is that if for example Kane does move to Manchester City um, having Bruno Fernandes and Salah what it allows you to do is keep Salah and you can potentially move Bruno on in one or two moves uh, to Harry Kane and uh, that kind of prevents you from taking big hits or even any hits at all. Um, so I really like just having Bruno Fernandes and Salah and it gives you a bit more flexibility in kind of a weird way uh, in terms of what you can do with your squad and also in terms of future transfers. You can also move him on to Son uh, who looked very good in pre-season, scored yet again um, yesterday against Arsenal. So there's a lot of options you can do by having Bruno Fernandes and in the meantime time he's going to get you a lot of points so I'd thoroughly recommend him and of course he's not essential he's not a must own you don't have to go for him um, but I just think at 12 million he's still one of the best options in the game and then now for the rest of my midfield I actually really like the look of this midfield um, although like I already highlighted before um, Liverpool facing Chelsea it's going to be quite difficult um, just to have him and Jota um, or at least, should I say, Salah and Jota facing Chelsea. It's just not really a fixture or a game week where you could probably see a lot of points. Um, but for all the other game weeks where Liverpool have some very good fixtures, I just really like having that double up of Salah and Jota. And Jota actually scored in pre-season and he's been looking very sharp. Is he going to be put on the bench with the fine form he's in who knows to be honest but Jota's versatile he can play anywhere alongside the front three he tends to play on the left or as a striker um, so he's got a bit of flexibility Salah's always going to pretty much play so it's really just a case of is Jota going to displace Mane or is he going to displace uh, Firmino and in pre-season Mane and Salah have also been looking very good despite not maybe scoring as many goals as you'd like um, so yeah I think Jota's still a great option at 7.5 million you could also go for Greenwood and what I really like about Manchester United's fixtures is just that you see a lot of goals in them and pretty much all of those fixtures, even Leeds, uh, who tend to be more susceptible defensively away from home. So, yeah, I just really liked uh, just having one of Greenwood or Jota in there and you can always downgrade one of them to Rafinha when Leeds' fixtures turn. So I really like having that kind of uh, flexibility in there. I think that's the key with your Game Week 1 squad. And then Harvey Barnes, he's someone that I had in my first initial draft. It was kind of between him and Madison at 7 million and I just prefer Barnes as an FPL asset I think he offers more from open play 
and in the Community Shield, he looked like Leicester's biggest threat until Iheanacho came on. He just looked so hungry. He was sharp, putting in good crosses. He was getting some good shots away, getting into great positions, and he looked sharp. He looked fresh, despite being out for many, many months. Harvey Barnes is looking very good, and to be honest, I'm probably going to be keeping him in my squad. And having two Leicester players with him and Amati, I mean, I could have gone with something similar for Fana, had stayed injury-free, but yeah, Harvey Barnes is just someone that I think, at 7 million, he is the standout. He's the best one at 7 million, in my opinion. And then, of course, if form or injury or something else happens, I can always move him about um, to someone else, maybe Greenwood, maybe Rafinha, um, but I have the flexibility in there. Buendia is another one. Uh, Willock now going to Newcastle. So I think it, there is actually a possible shout for going five in midfield, going two uh, up front and then spreading the funds elsewhere. Um, so that's pretty much something that I am considering. Um, you can't have the perfect team, unfortunately, but I do like this midfield and I like some of my defenders and just the whole team in general. Uh, even a bit of squad depth in there with Amati now being a starter. Um, but enough of all that. I've got Brownhill there. I mean, I'm not going to talk about him and Obafemi too much. Um, they're pretty much just enablers, budget holders. And I think at 4.5 million, I've said this before, Brownhill is probably my favourite option. He scored a few in preseason and he's probably going to get the most points out of that bracket but that can always change and uh, you never know. It could be Basuma once again. But as for the attack, Antonio and Danny Ings. So I'll be honest with uh, Danny Ings. I wasn't really considering him before his move to Aston Villa, but just him moving to a better team, in my opinion, um, having creators like Buendia behind him. Of course, it's a shame that Grealish is going, but always very unrealistic for Villa to keep Grealish and get Danny Ings and all these other players. Um, but I just like what's happening at Aston Villa. They've got some good players on the wings, um, creative players like Buendia who should be nailed. I think Ings is going to get plenty of service. He actually scored the other day in a preseason friendly. And ironically, it was his strike partner, Ollie Watkins, who got injured in the end and not Danny Ings, who we always you know, kind of expect to be injury prone. Um, and it was interesting also that El Ghazi was the one who took the penalty, which isn't too surprising. He tends to be the penalty taker when on the pitch. However, when El Ghazi isn't on the pitch, I would thoroughly expect Danny Ings to be the main penalty taker, and I really like that about him. At 8 million, the kind of main concern of him is his injury record. Other than that, though, he's playing in a good team, which... You know, to be fair, they have three very good fixtures to start the season with. Then there's a big fixture swing, but you can move him on to Bamford or someone else. Maybe Calvert-Lewin if he returns, Ian Acho if he could nail down a spot, Callum Wilson. You you've got a plethora of options, and yeah, you can always kind of have that flexibility. I think it's very key. I'm going to keep on stressing it throughout this video, but yeah, I think flexibility is key. Danny Ings at eight million for the first three game weeks is just someone you don't want to go without. Ollie Watkins, obviously we'll see if he returns uh, from injury or not. I think he should be fine. Um, I'm just not too keen on him nowadays. I think he's going to be shifted more so to the left, but Villa could play two up front, just like they did the other day, and uh, that's an interesting one. I think Ollie Watkins was actually the one who won the penalty in the end for El Ghazi, um, but yeah, I think Danny Ings is a very interesting option now, and his move to Aston Villa has brought him into my attention, and I think he's going to be in my starting team, although that can change. And then last, but definitely not least, is Antonio, and I've pretty much had him in all of my drafts, uh, and with good reason. I just like that double up uh, for West Ham. Sufa and Antonio is something I had pretty much uh, for a large portion of last season. And Antonio, great underlying stats. He's got some very good fixtures to start the season. Just like Danny Ings, and this is maybe very risky on my part, you know, having my only two strikers really, Antonio and Ings, both being injury prone, it can really backfire. They can even both be injured in the same weekend. Hopefully I haven't jinxed it there. Um, so that's obviously a big concern. Uh, but just like Ings, the only concern really is the injury record. So long as they're both fit and fully available, I just think they can get a lot of points. And Antonio more so over a long period of time uh, with the fixtures that Aston Villa have from game week four onwards. But I really like this team. Um, there could be some changes in the deadline, like I said before. Having these two injury-prone strikers is a problem. Ben Chilwell is not fully nailed. He might not even be playing in game week one. It could be someone else like Emerson or Marcus Alonso, so long as they're at Chelsea. And uh, yeah, maybe Sufar could go for someone else. West Ham... Their defence isn't particularly great, to be honest. Uh, it's not like they kept a lot of clean sheets. I think Sufal kept nine clean sheets last season. Um, so it's not like West Ham always keep clean sheets. Um, but then again, um, there's always going to be problems with your team. Also, Jota, having him and Salah 
and then they have some fixtures like uh, Chelsea, for example. You just don't want to have both of them starting and then having Chilwell and then having Trent Alexander-Arnold. You're going to be losing out on a lot of points potentially. Um, but yeah, other than that, I just really like this team. Maybe you could say there's a kind of lack of depth on the bench and it's very important, especially if, for example, COVID uh, throws a spanner into the works once again. Um, although I don't think it should be too much of an issue as it was in the year before. Um, however, you know, it's always important to have one or two options on your bench um, but then again, on the other hand, looking at it from a less cynical point of view, um, I think there's going to be less uh, or fewer kind of team selection headaches for me uh, with this kind of setup. And um, yeah, Amati really will be filling in every now and then. But I really like this team. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And uh, let me know what your teams are looking like uh, before the Game Week 1 deadline. And especially with all the press conferences that we're going to be getting, more news, more transfers happening this week this theme can definitely change. So it's not locked in by any stretch of the imagination. It's just how it's looking like at the moment. And I'm very happy with it. And I just pretty much listed all the kind of weaknesses and pros of it. You know, there's definitely ways to improve. So I could be making some changes. And thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, smash the like button and subscribe if you're new around here. And uh, yeah, just uh, as always, comment, engage with the channel. And I'll be looking to get back to all of you. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the future deadline streams and videos coming to the channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Dylan underscore RCM. And uh, you can talk to me there as well, whether it's through direct messages or just talking to me um, in public. Uh, it's no problem. And uh, always talking about football and FPL. Um, it's always very interesting. But yeah, thank you very much for the support and all the best of luck, I have to say, for Game Week 1 and for the season. And uh, remember to join the league as well, as I always say. And yeah, until next time. And uh, hope you have a very nice week.